uh, lecture series on powder metallurgy. So far, uh, we have been talking about uh, powder fabrication and we have discussed about uh, different methods of powder fabrication and we have talked about them in great details about all of these techniques which are listed here as you could see. And in the recent classes, uh, we have been covering this uh, particular topic, uh, atomization for making uh, metal powders in large scale. Okay. And in that, we have already discussed about uh, the basic principle of this process and also the physics behind it as to how it happens, you know, what are the different uh, aspects of this technique and so on. And then uh, we started talking about uh, the different methods or different kind of equipment uh, which are used for atomization, for the process of atomization like uh, the gas atomization process we have discussed and in that we have seen two kinds of atomization equipment in case of gas atomization and these were the, the horizontal one as you can see over here and the vertical one that you can see in this particular image. And then we also uh, talked about the other atomization techniques uh, like water atomization and in the previous two classes, we spoke about uh, the centrifugal atomization if you remember and here we talked about uh, two kinds of uh, centrifugal atomizer, one is the rot rotating rod and the other one is the rotating disc and then we have also discussed about uh, the different attributes of this uh, centrifugal atomization process. Okay. So, now that uh, we have covered different types of uh, atomization processes, it is time for us to have a look as to what kind of process uh, would give rise to what kind of powder particle and so on. Okay. So, let us have a look uh, about all this uh, atomization technique back again and then see what kind of powders do they produce. Okay, so let us have a look at the comparison between different atomization techniques. So let us make a table like this uh, where we have these different processes. Then the size of powder that they will generate, the particle shape and the cost. So, starting with gas atomization process. Here the size range that you can get is from 15 to 300 microns. As far as the particle shape is concerned, it is rounded and also spherical. and cost is moderate. Then we had talked about water atomization process. And in this case, the 
size range is 5 to 800 microns. Particle shape is irregular and nodular. and cost is low. Then we covered the centrifugal automation in which we had a rotating electrode or rotating rod and then we also had a rotating disc. So, let us look at the rotating electrode first. In this case, the size range is 200 to 600 microns. Particles are spherical in shape and cost is high. And finally, for the rotating disk process, size range is 50 to 300 microns, particles are spherical and here also the cost is high. So, these are the different attributes of this different kinds of uh, atomization techniques that we talked about in terms of the characteristics of the particles and also the cost of the process. And now finally, let us have a look at the limitations of this atomization process. As we have seen in this process, uh, there is an impact uh, from a gas jet or uh, from a water jet which uh, breaks down the uh, molten metal into uh, fine droplets to uh, generate the powder particles. And as far as the impact velocity is concerned, that is limited in this case. it is less than the velocity of sound. And this limitation on the impact velocity also uh, puts uh, some kind of limitation on the heat extraction, uh, particle size and the energy efficiency of the process. In fact, uh, the energy efficiency is low for the atomization process.
and as the particle size uh, decreases, uh, it puts more demand on the energy. Smaller the particles that you need, higher will be the energy requirement for this process. And if you remember, we talked about a parameter which has an influence on the particle size, and uh, that was the Weber number. The particle size d is given by uh, this relationship if you remember. The details of these uh, different parameters uh, have been already given before. Now, this uh, Weber number uh, is given as where rho g and v g are the density and the velocity of the gas uh, respectively. D L if you remember that is the ligament diameter and gamma is the surface energy. So, since uh, the velocity is limited in this case as we discussed just now, the Weber number also is low and it is in the range of ten to the power three to ten to the power four for fine particles and as you can again see from here uh, a high wave number would require high gas velocity as well and high gas density also as you can see from here again. In fact, uh, to generate a uh, high wave number for producing finer and finer particles, uh, the normal nozzles uh, uh, which are used uh, cannot be enough and uh, this technology called uh, rocket nozzle technology may have to be used to generate high velocity and therefore high Weber number. Right. So, the waiver number also puts a limitation on the process. The process efficiency decreases with increasing flow rate and pressure.
chemistry control is also a challenge at time and uh, with respect to this segregation of uh, alloying elements is an issue when you are making uh, alloyed powders uh, by this process. And of course, uh, we have seen in case of uh, some of the atomization techniques uh, like for example, the water atomization process, uh, there is a problem of uh, surface contamination that happens due to the oxidation of the powder during the process. or formation of the oxide layer that happens in water atomization as I said. Right, so these are uh, some of the limitations of uh, the atomization process, but nevertheless uh, this still remains one of the most uh, commonly used methods uh, for uh, making metal powders uh, in large quantities. Okay, so, this will uh, kind of uh, bring us uh, to the different processes of uh, atomization that we had lined up uh, for this particular topic. As far as the process uh, is concerned, uh, we can uh, conclude it over here, uh, but there is one more thing that we need to discuss before we actually uh, close this topic and that has to be you know discussed in, in little more detail and we need to understand uh, some concepts and some phenomena that happens during the process. So, we will we'll take that up uh, separately and probably discuss that uh, in a uh, in a, in, a, in a separate class, but for today uh, before we close this, let us try and summarize as to what we have learned so far about uh, the different uh, fabrication routes uh, for making metal powders. Essentially, we talked about four methods which are mechanical, electrolytic chemical and then finally atomization. Right, so this is what we had and we have discussed all these processes in, in detail and learned about them in terms of their different attributes, uh, process variables and so on. Starting from mechanical fabrication. Uh, we have seen how uh, this technique uh, is 
carried out and you know what kind of mechanical forces are used for uh, making uh, metal powders and we have also discussed that uh, mechanical fabrication is a top down approach. wherein you uh, start with the bulk material and uh, break it down to uh, smaller fragments to generate uh, metal powders and in order to uh, fragment it uh, in this case of mechanical fabrication a, a mechanical force in terms of one of these uh, processes uh, is used to, to generate the powders. And we have discussed what kind of you know mechanical process or uh, mechanical forces are used like milling, uh, attrition and other impaction techniques like uh, compressive crushing, uh, cold streaming and so on. Also we talked about uh, making of uh, metal powders by using machining chips and then uh, we had uh, discussed about uh, the electrolytic uh, technique in which uh, uh, the metal powders are generated uh, using an electrolytic cell where the anode uh, is the metal which is to be generated and then uh, through this uh, electrolytic process uh, it is deposited on the cathode and from there the, the powder is collected and on an industrial uh, scale uh, it is actually done in a in a big tank which uh, is like 3 to 4 meter long and it it carries a set of a series of uh, anode and cathodes to generate uh, the the metal powders in in large quantities uh, from a, a particular batch from a single batch and then we also uh, talked about uh, a, a particular uh, metal production by uh, this process uh, taking an example of copper and then uh, we also discussed about uh, chemical fabrication where there are different uh, routes again uh, in this category uh, starting from uh, gas solid uh, reduction reaction then we had uh, thermal decomposition where we uh, used a process called uh, carbonyl to, to generate uh, metal powders by thermal uh, decomposition of this uh, volatile compound of a metal. And then we talked about uh, precipitation from a liquid uh, wherein you have a metal salt which is uh, dissolved in a, in a solution and with the help of a uh, precipitating agent uh, that uh, metal is uh, released and precipitated in the form of uh, powders. And, uh, you know with the help of this a variety of uh, metal powders can be generated and uh, we have also seen that uh, using the same process uh, it is uh, also possible to um, coat uh, a particular surface for example a, a ceramic material surface like uh, thoria titania or tungsten carbide can be uh, coated with the metal like cobalt, nickel or iron when we use uh, the process of uh, co-precipitation where uh, both of these materials will be precipitated together. Okay. And then we talked about this process, uh, this process called uh, spray pyrolysis uh, wherein a, a spray of the metal salt solution is sent into a chamber where it is uh, thermally decomposed to generate the uh, metal powders uh, which are uh, collected at the end in this collection chamber 
and we have also seen that the powder which is generated inside this chamber by the thermal decomposition process can also be coated on a preheated substrate. So, this is also uh, a process of uh, making a coating apart from making metal powders. Then uh, we talked about uh, the process of uh, hydrometallurgical precipitation wherein uh, the particular uh, metal is in a compound uh, which is dissolved uh, in a salt solution and in this case we took the example of tantalum uh, which is dissolved in sodium then it is made into a cake and once uh, it is into the cake uh, the metal in this case tantalum is uh, released by uh, by washing and once it is obtained as uh, powder it is crushed followed by milling okay. we also talked about uh, precipitation from a gas wherein uh, the metal compound is in the form of a volatile gas which is uh, reduced uh, by reducing gas at high temperatures to generate the metal powder. We also talked about uh, the different attributes of the powders generated by a particular process like in this case the powders are uh, spongy and spherical in, in shape. Similarly, we talked about um, the other processes also as to what kind of powder morphology and powder characteristics they generate. If you remember for example, in the mechanical case, uh, the powder particles are generally uh, irregular in, in shape and uh, their uh, packing and flow characteristics are also not that great uh, due to that particular shape or that irregular shape. Then we also talked about this process of reacting to solids, you know, to make another solid uh, in the form of powder. But this is kind of more suitable for for making uh, intermetallic or uh, ceramic powders rather than uh, metal powders. And finally, in in uh, last few classes, you know, we have talked about this process called atomization, which is uh, a large scale uh, fabrication route for metal powders uh, with uh, production rate of as high as 400 kilogram per minute. And in this case, you know, what we have seen is that the powder particles are uh, spherical and uh, as a result uh, their uh, flow and packing characteristics are very good. And in this process of atomization we have also seen uh, different types of uh, atomization processes like gas atomization. Then, uh, water atomization and finally uh, the uh, centrifugal atomization process and then uh, we also had a, a comparison between them to show uh, you know what kind of uh, powder particles are generated by uh, each of these atomization processes and also uh, what is the cost uh, for, for this atomization processes okay so with this i think uh, we can uh, conclude uh, this uh, topic of uh, powder fabrication and as i said uh, in the next class uh, we have uh, one more uh, very important aspect of uh, uh, powder fabrication process particularly with regard to this atomization process wherein uh, you start with a liquid stream and then solidify that liquid into powders right so there is a solidification aspect which is involved here and we need to understand that so that's a very important aspect of this uh, atomization process and that is something that we are going to take up separately as i said before uh, 
uh, in, a, in a different class. But for today, this is all I have. Thank you for your attention.